Solunceni, a small village at the east border of Moldova. The quiet rural life flows here the same way as it did a hundred years ago. Men gather to chat near the well. Women hand wash clothes in a wooden tub. Horse-drawn carts carry hay to feed the cows, and this farmer just gathered some grapevines to give to his rabbits. It all seems ordinary at first, but walking towards the southern edge of the village, we suddenly notice a strange landscape. A row of concrete pillars stands in pairs, forming a circle. What is this? We ask a local resident passing by. Don't you know? He answers surprisedly, and then continues with pride. These are trolleybus traction poles. Solonceni is the only village in the world that has ever had a trolleybus system. Trolleybuses are electric buses that receive their energy through two electric poles connected to a wire hanging above the road. On the tip of each pole, there is a small conductive wheel that trolls the wire, hence the name trolley pole, or just trolley. In North America, that very system was used in the first electric trams, which gave them a confusing name, trolley cars, or again, just trolleys. In Europe, however, the trams are named properly trams, because Europeans had to invent their own electric current collector in order to avoid patenting issues. Trolley buses were quite popular in the early 1900s all over the world, when it was still not clear that the efficient, quiet, and environmentally friendly gasoline engine was the best choice for both public and private transportation. Then those trolleybus systems saw a gradual decay almost everywhere, except for the Soviet Union, which at first was not aware of its giant deposits of oil in Siberia, and when they were discovered, cleverly chose to make pure profit from selling the oil abroad and continued using electric public transportation in the cities. As of today, one can still name several dozens of trolleybus systems in Europe or North America, but can't do the same with Russia, Ukraine, Moldova, or any other post-Soviet country, because trolleybus served cities are countless there. That, however, does not answer one question. Why did they have a trolleybus in a village? The answer to this communist world question is well familiar to anyone who ever worked in the most evil capitalist corporations. Every community in the Soviet republics had a budget, and if that budget was not spent during the year, the remainder had to be refunded to the central government, and the next year the community's budget would be reduced. Solonceni was a very successful village. They had a milk farm where the cows were played Beethoven and Tchaikovsky music in order to increase milk production. As a result, no one knew what to do with all that milk money until the chairman of the farm, Nikolai Zayets, proposed to, quote, continue bringing rural living standards closer to the urban ones and build a 2.5 kilometer trolleybus line that would transport the villagers who lived in the valley to the farm that was located on the hill. Mr. Zayets managed to convince all his superior government structures that having a trolleybus instead of a regular bus would save the Republic a good amount of money, explaining that the farm was currently spending about 93 to 94 Soviet rubles a day to run a bus, while a trolleybus only needed 15 rubles. The profitable investment project was approved in February 1989. <laughs> Trolley bus construction inevitably brings the city, or in this case, the village streets to order. Trolley poles require a very smooth ride the slightest bump, and they jump off the wires, producing a short comedy scene for everyone watching and requiring the driver to leave his cabin and embark into the freezing cold to put the poles back. For Soviet cities or villages, it meant that the streets served by trolleybus would have to at least be somehow paved. Jumping a bit ahead, I will spoil the intrigue and say that the communist thing did not work out well. The Soviet Union collapsed, the cities went bankrupt, and oftentimes the only way to make the government at least fix the potholes was to threaten them with a shutdown of the trolleybus system. Though not as expensive as building, for example, a tram line, constructing a trolleybus line on a street almost always implies its renovation that might include reforming the sidewalks, installing street lighting, and so on. A trolleybus making its way through the city adorns it for everyone, 
and people appreciate that. This cute and open-minded but also focused and sometimes a little bit upset machine, model name ZIU-9, has been almost the only produced and operated trolley bus in the USSR since the 70s, and it has become a beloved part of the daily routine for tens of millions of people, as well as a hero of hit songs for multiple generations. Замер троллейбус, троллейбус нам парке перепутал механик провода в зоопарке. The same trolleybus model operated in Solenjeni. It was machine number 2049, rented from a depot in the country's capital, Chisinau. The village obviously did not have its own depot, so the trolleybus spent its nights in a barn, and every half a year or so it was towed to the city for maintenance. The 114-kilometer, six-hour-long trip was made by the heavy-duty tractor K700 and probably canceled out all the emission reductions this trolleybus was supposed to offer. However, no one thought about that back then, because there were bigger problems. In the year 1992, right in the middle of the trolleybus line construction, and when Moldova was already an independent state, a brutal civil war broke out right across the village's river, Dniester, with the Russian-speaking and pro-Soviet population of the Eastern Bank claiming to separate into a breakaway state called Transnistria. The military command stationed in a sister village across the river did not like the suspicious-looking works of building a trolleybus line towards the cowshed and Mr. Zayets had to personally cross Dniester in order to resolve this tension. He did so like all the other Solentjeni residents were doing for hundreds of years, in a rowboat. There is no bridge in Solentjeni, or even a ferry, but there were ambitious plans to build a cable car. The trolleybus system was put to action on the Labor Day celebration, 1st of May 1992. The machine did from six to eight circles per day with each trip performed at a fixed hour and dedicated to a fixed category of passengers, be it milkmaids at 5 a.m., tractor drivers and school children at 7.30 a.m., or night watchmen in the evening. 30 years later, the people of Solenceni still remember the horn machine with kindness and warmth, although after all this time, they are confused about what color it was. Doamna Elena, ce faceți acum? În cazna sofozului odișit să trage linii de trolleybus, să duc trolleybus, așa s-a făcut. Ce culoare avea? Galbănă cu... Cu linii? Linii, da. Câți oameni încăpea un el? Încăpea mulți. Trolleybusul care îl avem noi în oraș. Da, trolleybusul în oraș să încăpești. Când au adus, a fost mare bucurie în sat. Mai cel mai tare era bucurie la copii. The trolleybus of the village worked for only two years. It was an era of so-called primitive accumulation of capital, and Mr. Zayets, refusing to participate in the looting and selling of the collective farm property, was removed from his position. A fost poftit la Raion, de președintele Raionului, și a spus, domnul Zayets, dar cum crezi că acei de la Râbnița care rușe ce e, să ne ploși ca tine, de ei nu pun trolebus în oraș și ăla. Cum și-a spus că noi ți-am găsit prieșini și te-am închide și așa de acolo pe grate. Mai ghini, ești tu și așa mai ghini pentru tine și pentru noi. The trolleybus was sent back to Chișinău, where it worked until 2006. The power station equipment and the wires were taken off and sold. Nikolai Zayets had already passed away, as had both drivers. Todor Kraciun in Mikhail Zavidie. Ten years ago, comic journalists from Chisinau had an interview with Nikolai and Toder, and they confirmed that's how the true story of the world's only village trolleybus of Solenceni went. <laughs>